So in this project, I'm making a real simple cover for the fire pit I have in my backyard. It tends to get filled with rain and just kind of nasty breeding ground for mosquitoes, etc. So I start with some cedar decking boards from the big box store. And on my table saw, I'm just ripping them down on one side to establish a square edge, sliding it over, and then ripping the other side down as well. So now I'm working on both layout and sizing uh, for each of my subsequent pieces I'm adding to this starting center board here. So I found the center, uh, have the, the full diameter, and I'm just creating a simple little jig here with a nail in the end of a piece of scrap. That goes into the center of the board, and you'll see in a second here I'm going to drill a hole in the end roughly uh, for the radius, and then I'm going to use that to put a pencil in. And then with that pencil, I'm going to keep drawing my circle, and then that's going to establish the length of each subsequent piece as I draw the circles onto them and then cut them off and slowly add them up from the center out until I have my full diameter. For the last two pieces to complete the circle, uh, I just ripped a piece down because it didn't need to be very wide. Those are all finished marking. I'm now doing the second side all the way around, and I'm going to prepare to start gluing up. So I did this glue up in halves, one that allowed me to just sort of take my time, relax, uh, and be confident I was getting everything right. And secondly, I've got plenty of clamps at this length, so I could do a really good job of getting nice, even a correct pressure all the way across. Because this is an outdoor project, I'm using Type On 3 glue. Uh, Type On 3 is waterproof. It's not generally my favorite to work with, but the, obviously the, the waterproof uh, nature of this product is important for this job. Anything else, I could put it out there, first couple rainstorms is probably going to start falling apart. So waterproof glue, and then using cedar, obviously, for its weather uh, capabilities. And you'll see later, I choose a, a really durable outdoor finish for this project at the end as well. While doing this glue up, I was able to take advantage of the layout circles that I'd drawn earlier to line up each of the boards as I went along. So you'll see me using spring and other clamps to align just the edges of the boards before I uh, apply pressure across those joints to keep those nice and flush. Once the glue had dried on both halves, I got them scraped and cleaned up, and then here I am gluing up the two halves together to create the full, the full blank that I'm then going to cut the circle out of. So I'm using a router jig to cut the circle. Uh, here I am making the first mistake in this project. I'm using just a simple little nail as the pivot. Really should have used either a screw to get that much more secure or even a through bolt. The reason I chose not to do either of those is because I want this waterproof and I didn't want a, a hole in the middle there. But you, as you'll see in a little bit, uh, I really would have been better off than doing that. 
So I'm cutting out the circle with a plunge router and a straight bit, making several passes, lowering the bit a little bit each time. That way I'm not taking too much and it doesn't really bog down the router too terribly much. A better alternative would have been to cut roughly uh, to the outside of the line first with a jigsaw. That would leave space for the sawdust to come out and really eliminate some of the work that the router bit has to do. Uh, but this way works fine as long as you just take your time and keep clearing out the sawdust. Now I'm lowering the bit for the next pass. You can see this process makes a huge mess, um, but because this is cedar, it really smells fantastic in the shop. The only real worry is that uh, I hope it doesn't attract any stray hamsters to come and hang out and live in there. Now here's where I really screw up. Uh, I'm just trying to get loose and make ready for the next pass and I pull the nail out. So that was a giant screw up. Uh, there's really no way to get that aligned. I tried for a little while and eventually just gave up and <laughs> went to plan B. So here's plan B that maybe should have been plan A as I already discussed. I'm taking a jigsaw. I'm running around through the channel that I created with the router bit. Um, if I'd done this from the beginning, I probably would not have had the opportunity to screw up and, and pull the nail out. It's pretty funny in the recording, you can hear me swear under my breath even though I knew the, the microphone was on. So next, I'm going to use the original router cuts as a reference with a flush trim bit. So the bearing from this bit will run on what was previously cut with the router. And then the bit hangs down below, and it's going to take off the remaining material that I left after I went around with the jigsaw. So like every project, lots of sanding in lots of different steps, uh, so I'm not going to show you too much here. Before I got to the end and put on the finish, everything was sanded to 320 to get a real nice smooth surface ready for finish. Here I'm actually sanding before putting on the edge profile to have a flat surface to work from. Here I'm using just a chamfer bit. I did this in two passes so as not to take off too much material and left just a nice 45 degree chamfer that will hopefully allow the rain to come off. So because this is going to be outside taking the brunt of the weather year round, I decided to finish it with a super durable finish. I chose to use Cetol Marine, which is a marine varnish used for woodwork on the exterior of boats. Uh, this stuff is a little bit unusual compared to most other finishes in that you're not supposed to sand it in between coats. So I put on three coats. I think it ends up with a really beautiful color. And because I chose this particular finish, uh, hopefully I shouldn't have to do too much to it. Maybe another coat or two every couple years. Uh, we'll just sort of monitor how's it, how it goes. And it's not going to turn gray uh, like just na natural cedar would be if you left it out on its own. So now to scoop out the nasty water from the fire pit for what I hope is the last time. So in addition to leaves and whatever junk comes along there, it's still got some of the ashes from the last fire that we had. We try to clean the most of those out we can, but you know, this is pretty nasty. 
I don't like doing it. Hopefully this is it.